I'm Alessia. Uh, I know I haven't posted in a while. I was just, I just got back from a summer abroad in Paris with the University of Toronto, which I highly recommend um, if you are looking to do a summer abroad, but that's not what this video is today. Um, I haven't done a U of T specific video in a while, so I thought that I would do one today since course selection is coming up next month. So I've already completed most of my uh, degree requirements for life sciences, but I thought that I should make this video because in my opinion, the course selection at U of T is harder than taking the actual course. So I wanted to kind of give an overview of how to do it and how I go about it because it can be super confusing, especially for a first year student. Um, when I was in my first year at U of T in life sci, course selection, like, it was so confusing, it was terrible, it took me forever, and it still takes me forever because there's so many courses at U of T and there's so many different factors to consider, especially with priority enrollment, breadth requirements, program requirements, degree requirements, and uh, like all the electives that you have to take. Also with availability of the classes, so you have to make sure you have all these backups. So there is a lot to course selection, and in my opinion, I don't think U of T gives enough resources or guidance for course selection, especially for first year students. So today I'm making this video specifically for life science course selection, um, but it is broad and anyone looking at course selection in any program uh, can take this information and use it for themselves. But I am gonna be using, like the examples that I'll be using will be life size specific. So I'm just gonna get right into it because there is a lot to cover. Okay, first things first, you need to log into your ACORN account and I believe it's under enroll and manage and then you click the tab fall winter 2024 2025 or whatever year that you're watching this video that page will take you to your enrollment cart so when whenever you're doing course enrollment or course selection you type all of the courses that you're taking into the search bar and you add the course into the enrollment cart. So before I start any of the more crucial information in this video, you need to know that you always have to add those courses into your enrollment cart. So that way on your day and time of enrollment, you're not typing all of those courses in individually, but you just have to press enroll, 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 enroll on like this list of courses that are in your enrollment cart. And also another important thing to note is that just because something is in your enrollment cart doesn't mean that you're already enrolled in it. So your enrollment cart is like your shopping cart. You have to add all the courses that you want to take into your enrollment cart and then on the day and time of your enrollment, then you have to log into Acorn and press enroll in all of the courses. And you have to make sure that you do it right at the time of your course enrollment because classes do fill up really fast. So you want to make sure that you are like the first one to do it so you get into your class and you also get into like your lab and your tutorial um like preferences okay so first i'm going to start off with what a life size student needs to take in their first year so that is chem 135 chem 136 bio 120 bio 130 math 135 and math 136. I'll put them all here so you can type them into your ACORN. So those are your six life sci courses. Most life sci students take those classes unless you don't need them for your program. So for example, I'm doing a major in human biology and a double minor in immunology and art history. And for my major in human biology and my minor in immunology, I did not need to take math 136. So I didn't take it. I only did I only did the two chems, the two bios, and the first calculus. I didn't do the second one because I don't really like math and my program didn't need math, so I didn't feel like I wanted to take it. So take that into consideration when you are doing your course selection um, because I have heard bad things about that class. And if I hadn't looked at the programs that I wanted to enroll in, then I would have known that and I would have taken it anyway, which would have honestly just been a waste of time for me. So now that you know your basic courses that you need to take for LifeSci, which typically are those six courses that I mentioned earlier, now you have four electives. And this is a really crucial and important part because it can be super easy or it can be super difficult. Um, typically it's more on the difficult side because of uh, 
because of breath requirements, program prerequisites, uh, course availability. Um, so this is like the part where I really struggled first year. Um, and I think a lot of other first year students do struggle with this part. So when going about choosing these four other electives, the first thing you wanna do is look at the program requirements for possible majors and minors that you wanna declare um, in your second year. So at the University of Toronto, you come in as a life size student, and then at the end of first year, you declare your major, and your majors can be uh, open, or limited. So open means you can enroll, you don't have to apply for it. So mine were all open, um, but there are a lot of life side programs that are limited. And limited means that you have to apply at the end of first year for your major or your minor, and you either get in or you don't. So have some open backups in case you don't get in, um, but that's why it's good to do your research early, like now, so that way you have like, the best chance of getting into the program that you want. So for example, a life science major in psychology is a limited program um, and you need to have the prerequisite of Psych 100 and I believe you have to have somewhere in the area of like a 75% in that class to uh, be considered for the program. So again, the first thing you want to do is go on to the U of T program list site and I'll link everything in my bio um, so go to that site, go to the life sciences tab, and you'll see like all of the possible majors and minors for life science students. Um, and you actually can do any major or minor in that, in that, uh, in like the faculty of arts and science. So I'm a life science student, but I'm doing a minor in art history. Um, that's also an open program. So you can also do that if you're looking, but go through those, see possible majors and minors that you want to, uh, declare in your second year, whether that be life sci or not, um, and see what the prerequisites are and if it's open or limited, because if it does have a first year prerequisite, like for example, psychology, having the psych uh, 100 first year course as a prerequisite, then one of your electives should be the psych 100. So that's just one example, but some other programs like maybe biochem might have math 136 as a prerequisite, so you have to take the 136 also. So that would be my first, so that would be the first thing you do when choosing electives. Go through the program listing for the arts and science, see what the, what programs uh, appeal to you most and what first year prerequisites there are to get into those programs if they are limited. And those should be the first electives that you add into your enrollment cart and they should be your first choice for electives. So the second thing to do when choosing your electives after you've chosen them based on your program prerequisites is to try and complete all your breath requirements. So as a life science student, taking your two bios, two chems and your maths will already get you two breath requirements. I believe it's living things in their environment and the physical and mathematical universe. So don't take electives that are in those two breath requirements because you're already taking a bunch of life science classes that fulfilling those breath requirements. So focus on completing the last three breath requirements in your first year because the last thing you want to do is when in your fourth year you still have breath number three requirement and you're picking your electives based on that category. So make sure that you uh, try and get most of them done in first and second year. So with that being said, what you want to do is go to the timetable builder for U of T. I will also link that in the description below. Um, go to that site and you filter, you fill in all the filters um, and when you put and when you do the filter for breath requirement, do the three breath requirements that you're not already fulfilling with your life side courses. You put those in, you press search and it will give you like a list of all the classes that are offered in those three breath requirements in the fall and winter semesters of this academic year and there's going to be a lot so you can filter them more depending on what you want to take um so go through all of those look at possible electives and i would recommend going and picking some electives that are really big classes like thousands of people because first year classes fill up really fast and in case you don't get some of your other uh smaller seminar classes that you want to get into you have to have like those backup classes that are have like a thousand students in them so you know for sure that you're going to get that elective um so go through those find any electives in those in those breath requirements that you want write them all down input them into your 
uh, enrollment cart. And then once you have those classes, uh, you can go and look at the first year seminars. So my like biggest tip for first year students, any first year student, not even only lifestyle, like any first year student is um, take some first year seminar courses because they're very small. They're like 30 people. So it kind of is like a good transition from high school to university because it's like the environment of a high school classroom, but it also has like more of a heavy workload than a typical high school class. So the first year seminars that I took in first year were the seminar on the Sistine Chapel. I'll put all of the uh, course codes up here, but I took the seminar on the Sistine Chapel. I took an astronomy first year seminar and the one and um, dark matter and dark energy seminar. So I actually took three first year seminar courses, which I think really benefited me because they weren't as heavy as a, a workload as chem, bio, and math. So I definitely recommend picking a lot of the, like going through the first year seminar course list and picking your favorite ones and adding them to your enrollment cart. And then having the, your bigger 1000 people elective classes as those backups in case you don't get in because those 30 students first year seminars fill up really fast because there's not a lot of spots and there's a lot of students so that is all i have for first year life sci course selection at the university of toronto um yeah my biggest tip is just to like take your time and really go through it because it is a nightmare for everyone so don't feel bad if you are confused because i was super confused in my first year everyone's super confused in their first year and adding course selection on top of that is just it's so overwhelming and I don't think U of T gives students enough resources to feel comfortable like navigating all of these websites. So if you have any questions, please let me know, put them in the comments and I'd be happy to uh, help as much as I can. But I really hope this video helped and good luck everyone in course selection.